Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, a Grand Arena story. Guys, we are in match number five, the semifinals of 3v3. I've actually been doing really well in 3v3. I've been undefeated for a while in 3v3, in fact. Two seasons. This is uh, mid-season already in this season, and I'm still undefeated. And I'm actually, it, overall in GAC, I'm on a pretty good win streak. You know what? You guys, uh, I'll talk about that at some other point. We're, we're, we don't need to focus on win streaks because that's like, resting on our laurels. Let, like, let's just try to win. That That's what matters, right? Like, winning in the present. I don't... I, I, when people tell me how good they are, I'm like, oh, well, that's cool that you're good, but like, I want to see it. I want to see you. I want to actually see you do it. I, I want, like, I want proof. I don't want you to tell me. I don't. I don't care that you think you're good. What I care about is that you. Uh, you actually are currently good. Because what good are you to me, frankly, if if you're not good anymore? If you're a has been, then go be a has been somewhere else. I don't care. So, uh, anyways, <laughs> we're. Uh, th this this match, one thing I do want to point out real quick, guys, I do have a new mic today, uh, so if I'm too loud, if I sound weird, if there's an issue, if the sound isn't mixed right, please let me know. Uh, my old mic was starting to just fuzz out, there, there were some issues, so uh, hopefully this one, this is an upgrade to the old one, and it's brand new, so hopefully it's going to be better, but uh, look, give me feedback. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Mike. I don't want feedback from you. But, uh, okay, so this fight, my opponent likes to place most things, uh, or mo keep most things for offense, so I countered by putting a ton of stuff on defense. I'm actually not going to show you, I'm not going to let you guys see all of the zones uh, for super long and explain them. We're going to try a speed round-ish. Um, it's not going to be fast forwarding or anything, but we are going to, I'm just going to kind of hustle our way through. My opponent set it up so that we have to clear, like, pretty perfectly, kind of. Like, we have to, um, he was able to clear me, and, and you'll see that. Uh, he did, he did have one dropped battle, though, so we had a little bit of wiggle room, but you know how it works. If you fail one, and especially because I don't have a ton left for offense, if you fail one, it can cause this cascading effect where you just start failing others because your other offensive teams are weaker. So, uh, with that said, guys, let's move over to the actual fights. All right, so um, my defense is, you can see, one shot. I put Ray with Quill and IG, which I haven't done yet <clears throat> this season. Um, he one-shot everything but my Commander Luke in the back. He took seven to get through that one. Everything else he one-shot. My fleets he one-shot. I think he got like a 57 and a 59. And uh, his squad. So I do want to pause here for one second, guys. Uh, there's actually two things I want to tell you, uh, which is going to... That's just frankly going to take more than one second. Even though I said one second, that was a lie. That was a bold-faced lie. I lie like a rug. I lie, lie like a liar. So, uh, anyways, look at his Darth Revan team, though. Missing Malak. I wasn't sure what to take. For a while, I wanted to take Darth Vader. Darth Vader it was too fast, actually. Uh, their Basti is like Tw uh, 320 speed, something like that. His Darth Revan is like 290 speed, so my Darth Vader was faster. No way I could get around it. Um, and so we had to reach a compromise. I'll show you guys what happens. The other thing is, guys, I don't show my fight with Finn, Finn Poe. Real frustrating, I know. I meant to. I just cut it out of my recording for this, and I apologize. What I used was Bando lead, because I have IG and Quill uh, on defense with Ray, and I used Bando lead with Han and Chewie. And I really wish I could show you guys, but it's basically the same exact thing. He does. He just doesn't get Whistling Birds. So what we're going to end up doing, when we get through this front zone, I'm not going to tell you how easy or difficult it was, but once we do get through it, because we do, it's just going to cut straight to my attacks up top. Well, we'll show. I'll show you guys the back zone. Hopefully I can pause in time. Show you guys the back zone, and then we can go from there. So that being said, let's actually go into the fights. Um, well, actually, we'll show, I guess I show this, this zone twice, that's right, because my editing skills are awesome. Um, 
Um, up top, nothing too crazy. There's a Bando team, a weird Mothra team with Chupio. And uh, what I ended up doing, guys, I wanted to try Vader, because Vader could have done it. I could have done it with Vader for sure. Um, I was pretty sure he didn't have any Galactic Legends in the back, but I don't want to use Galactic Legends, especially not on this team. That was super overkill. Um, what I wanted to do was use Vader, because Basti would still go, and I could still cull her first, and then just kind of finish off Revan over time, but instead I, I chose to use General Skywalker, and I don't know, like, it looks pretty dicey-ish here, but it actually wasn't at all dicey. If there's Malak here, I don't try that at all. Like, there's no way I try it, but I was fast enough to go before him, may as well just go, so killed them. 47 isn't great, but my opponent did give me a little bit, bit of wiggle room, and as long as we can one-shot now, like, that's that's really the key. We have to one-shot, and uh, so Mothra team, you guys have seen me do this a million times. I'm going to actually get a drink while you guys are watching this. Hmm, <clears throat> It's good tea. <laughs> All right, so... I mean, you killed B1 here. The one thing that went wrong so far early on, actually, is B1 uh, got killed by Grievous, which means Grievous gets his turn, and then he gets his bonus turn for having killed B1. So he gets two in a row, which isn't fun. But, uh, you know, this... Man, this team is super good. And, okay, so no shade on my opponent here at all. Uh, he clearly didn't scout me, though. If he did, he would know. Like, th this team kills all the Grievous squads. It just does, and at a pretty high rate. So I'm waiting to heal myself here until I kill B2, because I wanted him to get his AoE, then I could heal everyone. And uh, we're throwing the grenades from Cassian whenever we can, because, not because the grenades do damage, but because it calls K2 to assist a lot. Now, one thing I want to point out about this squad, someone was talking to me today, my buddy Hens, and I think he understands this, but, uh, you know, we were discussing it, and it, it occurred to me, I haven't really talked about it much. The Grievous team succeeds because of all of their debuffs, and Mothra debuffs... D debuffs her team, she cleanses it at such a high rate that going at, going at it and at just blow for blow really isn't that good for Grievous. Like, he needs those sneaky tricks, so to speak. Like, they made his kit really well. Like, it's very thematic. Like, he doesn't win. He, he fights unfairly. It's like all the target locks, all the debuffs, all the everything mean that he wins. And if you deny him that, then he's not that powerful. So... Here's uh, the space. You see Fin Fin Poe is alive. Now they're dead and we're in the back zone. So, my again, my apologies. Uh, no Galactic Legends in the back. He's got that Hux team with Red Trooper, which is slightly scary. The Barris team is a, a little embarrassing because it doesn't have a third Galactic Republic Jedi. Uh, Cam even has his Zeta. It could be a better squad, but you need... His, his Zeta and a ton of his abilities only work if you have all Galactic Republic Jedi on his squad. So, missed potential there. He does have a pretty high relic Padme team. Uh, but first, got to clear the top. So, he's got a high relic Bando team. We're going to use our relic 4 and 5 Geos here. I think Geo Soldier is the third that I chose to go with. And, uh, yeah. So, Dispel IG. And then... There's no debuffs on Bando, and you can see Bando already took a turn, because his quill's pretty quick. Uh, gave everyone turn meter. So we want to put some debuffs on people before Spy gets a big hit. We want to stop, stop those whistling birds, of course, as quick as we can, which we did. And then we shut him up hard, and now the rest is just cleanup. I mean, sorry for spoilers. Uh, you, guys can, you guys can be in suspense if you want to know how many uh, banners I ended up with. Is it 54 or 51 or somewhere in the middle? Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's over. There, there's no way they can recover from this. They don't have enough damage. So, uh, we're just trying to kill. We're trying to queel this squad. <laughs> See how clever I am? Or am emmant, am not. The tea is making me more clever, guys. So, uh, anyways, just trying to find a way. I'm saving my heals with the Brood Alpha, and I don't know. It's not really working. He just get, keeps doing AoEs, 
He's not gonna kill us, like, he's not doing AoEs at a rate that's actually, like, possible to kill us, but... It's also, like, we, we can't heal enough, it looks like. Maybe Spy. Spy's looking a little bit close. Like, maybe if he gets two hits in you here, he might be able to heal himself, but no. But no. 51, but we're okay, because we, we do have two Galactic Legends available here. And uh, so we can, we can just move on. Um, so I'm, I'm taking Vader here. A lot of people make the mistake of using Palpatine lead with Vader and uh, in 3v3, and you, you really need Vader lead against Geos, because if there's a dispel, if they can cleanse all of their uh, all of their buffs or debuffs, and you're using Palpatine lead, then you're just screwed because you don't have enough turns with Merciless Massacre to cycle through on Vader very fast. You just don't in 3v3. 5v5, that's fine uh, to use Palp Lead because you get to Merciless a lot faster, but in this case, guys, like, okay, so you see Brood Alpha here. If he takes a turn, if this was 3v3, oh, which it is, if this, see, look at this, he cleansed everyone's debuffs, but then because we had Vader Lead, Oh, they all came back, or at least the dots did, which means that I can kill the team again. Like, I can actually, I have ammunition, right? Like, because the whole, the whole thing about this is, I gotta check out Thrawn triple tapping here, guys. It's pretty sweet. Um, but the whole thing about this is, and, and then everyone assists to kill him. That was pretty sweet, too. Um, yeah, uh, the, the whole thing is you, you need the ammunition from Vader to be able to kill the team. Um, anyways, easy enough. Now, this one is a little dicey. There are so many moving parts, guys, because you can't hurt Django. You're going to have to kill Django and Newt twice. Magna Guard wants to taunt, and they're going to do extortion a lot. Extortion just kills a team really, really fast if you're not pay if you're not staying on top of it because it slows you down, it does way more damage whenever Newt cycles through, it makes, it makes him way faster, so he's, he's just putting extortion up. However many people have extortion, they're taking like 20% damage. He can call everyone to assist on people with extortion. Like, in 3v3, it is a huge mess. I call him, it's not just me, a lot of people call him GL Newt, like Galactic Legend Newt in 3v3 because of just how much chaos he can do. Now, watch this, I, I he still has damage immunity, so I can't hurt him, and I, re I realized that when I was doing it, I told the stream, but I was hitting him because I didn't want Magna Guard to taunt, and granted, he got a turn a little bit later, but I still think that's the wise move to do. Now, uh, Django did do his AoE, uh, which is great for for them, uh, not, not fun, but he did manage to he did manage to hit BB-8, which means that he I got counter off, and then it called R2 to assist and called it good. So uh, we killed Newt by now. Now we don't have to worry about extortion. Now one other thing, guys, watch the watch foresight on BB-8 and Jedi training Ray. Like you want that's another of the moving parts. See, Django probably would have finished off BB-8 there if I didn't have foresight, and that, that's one of his big weaknesses, is you you want, you obviously don't want him to be getting hits, but if he, he's, he's inevitably, if he's well modded, if the team is good, and Newt, you know, you have so many other distractions, you have the taunt uh, from Magna Guard, eventually he's going to get a hit in, but if you have foresight, it just completely negates his huge hit, so, uh, and even if it does double hit, it's still just both of them miss, so, um, <clears throat> The question here is, can I get Illuminated Destiny off? I wasn't sure. 48 away, there's just no way we can do that. So I call BB-8 with Jedi Training Ray here, hoping that that's going to heal him enough. Not quite enough, so 50 banners, a little sloppy there, but, I mean, that, that's kind of, that's one of the scarier matchups I had in this fight, and, I don't know, 50, 50 is okay. They quitted themselves well, in my opinion. Now, I hate using Treya against the Mothra team because, uh, especially with Kara here, because Kara, watch how, watch how close to death everyone actually gets. Um, uh, you get isolated on Kara, but, and that's great, but Kara can steal so much turn meter. If she takes enough turns, it can really, like, you can make it so that you're, so that a trio just never gets a turn. Now look at, uh, Treya's close to death here, guys, and she's blinded. Uh, not... 
Not a great situation. Um, Jupio is actually decent with Mothra because whenever he assists, he actually assists with the full damage that he normally assists with, as opposed to like the ninety percent, ninety percent drop uh, dropped damage from from Mothra. The, he's awkward in three v three with Mothra though because uh, if you kill. Like, he, he essentially just can't ever revive. He can't mate, use that part of his of his uh, kit. And so Mothra can't revive him. If you kill someone else, I don't know, use your logic. I'm not going to take time to explain it, but it doesn't really work in 3v3 that well. Uh, 5v5, it's he's okay there. Oh, okay, so this is like maybe one of my favorite comps in the game. You don't get to use it too, too often, but I do have the Zeta. So I have Relic 7 on Stormtrooper Han. Which I don't really regret, that's like a clash thing, but uh, you put Watt with this team, usually you want Watt with like a Galactic Legend or something, but um, <laughs> if you can't, if you don't need him, this team man is so crazy, because Stormtrooper Han is just a brick wall, you can't, it's so hard to kill him, so hard. As, and if he's just permanently taunting, then you just put a damage per second, a DPS character, an attacker, uh, with him. And you give them weapons tech, so they ignore armor, and uh, Wampa actually has both his Zetas. So as they're accumulating dots, and uh, in this case, like, they have healing immunity, which no one can agree on which Zeta is the best on Wampa, by the way, guys. But, um, in my opinion, that's the good one, is his roar inflicts healing immunity. And you see, like, especially in this particular situation, it is the best because dam dots, the damage over time, they're, they're unpredictable how many are going to be on a given character. But in this case, like Daka, it's Daka lead. So she's at like 200k health right now. And it's really tough to chew through that, especially through a fast zombie trying to taunt all the time. And... Um, but but it's no worries, because look, she's healing. She's immune to healing right now. She she just can't. And eventually she actually just heals over from the damage over time, which is super dissatisfying. But uh, this this team is just like perfect for for countering a nice sister team. Uh, granted I have high relics on them and everything, but when you actually when you actually get to use your Relic 7 Stormtrooper Han, you're gonna have a good day. So we got 54 uh, 54 very happy banners there, and, um, yeah, we're just marching through. We still have two Galactic Legends available here, and, uh, first we want to use Kiati Mundi, though. This team is one of my very favorites to use lately in 3v3. You can see I just one-shot that Red Trooper, uh, all those buffs on Kiati Mundi, plus him just being a natural badass. It's just a really cool thing. So, um, almost one-shot Hux there. We can shut him down. Obviously, we're not gaining turn meter, but this isn't a, this team doesn't really do turn meter anyways. It's more like you start with a ton of resilience and all of that extra bonus protection and, and uh, tenacity, and then over time you can just uh, attrition them down. And I mean, now now the red was once we killed red, it was like well, it doesn't matter. Like they don't have enough damage to actually hurt us. I think if you run Hux, you probably need more than just red. Honestly, in 3v3, you need something else, some other damage per second. I don't know what, though. Um, so anyways, got 54 there, and now... Alright, so so here's the scary part in... If you use Sith Eternal against a Padme squad, it can get really scary because they have a ton of assists, and they have healing immunity that can be applied from Anakin. Now note that Anakin's not really applying it at a super high rate in this case, and that's great, but when you, when he does eventually do it, it can get dicey. In 5v5, I have absolutely seen full five-man squads of Padme take down solo Sith Eternals because people don't realize what a threat that healing immunity is. But what you want to do, you save that link. So okay, watch how we, I have healing immunity on me now. <clears throat> And now we're just reapplying it on the same people. Just put it on Anakin and Padme again. And when you do that, it takes a turn and then it takes another turn. And now, healing immunity is gone. It's just like magic. It's it's disappeared because we're fancy. 
uh, <laughs> and because it takes multiple turns. So, I mean, we, he reapplied it right away, but it did buy us enough time to finally get to our ultimate, kill everyone, and get our 55, just like we deserve. So, got the win there, and then finally we have Jedi Master Luke available for the final squad for the disappointingly non-Galactic Republic Jedi squad. May as well take Ayla here. <clears throat> she is actually fantastic in 3v3 with Jedi Master Luke. And Hoda's great, just to keep everyone's protection high. Uh, Kiati Mundi can hit like a truck, so what do we want to do? We want to try to debuff them, give everyone turn meter, uh, call Ayla to assist, and get that stun on Kiati Mundi. And then uh, Barris can dispel that on Cam if she takes a turn. So we want to kill her so she doesn't take turns anymore. Um, it seems seems pretty obvious to me. Uh, so just trying to kill Barris here. Once she's gone, I mean she's she's kind of in a lot of ways the linchpin for that squad because uh, she heals so much and she cleanses. Once she's gone, um, old Ben <laughs> he totally stands a chance here, right? Like no, he he's sitting here. He should feel ashamed, like. He's the tank and he dies last. That's that's not the that's not the tank's job. <laughs> so so uh, got a 54 there and we we cleared the zone the squad zones relatively efficiently. Um, now we just have to. This could all just be for naught if we fail on ships because because uh, we, we, we can fail on ships. Now the Tarkin fleet is really good anti malevolence tech actually. So we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to bring rebels actually, even though. The TIE Bomber is has a lot of good natural synergy against Rebels. The AI, and the AI plays it fine. Uh, you just have to go, you need, you need, to be clear guys, you have to, you have to have Biston, frankly. Like, Biston makes this possible. The Rebel Fleet sucks without Biston. If you think you have a Rebel Fleet, but you don't have a good Biston, then you're wrong. You don't have a good fleet. Uh, you save that wiggle though, so that you can immediately get another turn from Falcon. Now we don't have burning anymore. Bomber's gone. If we can kill that, uh, if we can kill the Vader tie pretty quick, then the rest of this team just falls apart. Like without bomber, really, it just falls apart, anyways. But uh, I'm gonna kill the gonna kill Vader's tie, and then this gauntlet actually wasn't actually that strong, but he's he's okay. He like I don't know. Uh, he wasn't as big of a threat. He's not a damage per second threat. I don't know why I keep calling it damage per second instead of DPS. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. Hopefully people understand what I mean, though. Um, anyways, got the kill on the shuttle. 63 banners. Pretty nice. Um, it, it, th this one is totally clench time, though. I assume that there's, I assume that there's a decent chance of failure there sometimes, but... Um, didn't fail that time. So uh, now we're using Finalizer against this Rebels team because it's it, it's just, I mean, it's formulaic. So you, you do the Hunter Mark thing on Falcon, you stun Falcon, you get another assist with uh, Silencer, he kills Falcon, and now does 106k damage to Biggs. They can regenerate, but without Falcon, this, is, this isn't a fleet without Falcon. So, um... Anyways, hand the turn to Silencer, get another hit. That wasn't very impressive, but usually you can get a stun or do something. Um, and I like to bring Cad Bane in right away if I can, just to uh, just to call another assist. This whole team, it it's like the old school Jedi Revan teams actually with Grandmaster Yoda. The, that whole thing, that whole team, I used to just call it like that. That team is actually centered around, like Jedi Revan is great, but his whole kit is around making Grandmaster Yoda good in a lot of ways. Like now he's not really tethered to Yoda anymore, but back then he totally was. And because, and the whole thing was just getting Yoda as many hits in as possible. And that's exactly the same here. Just silencer, call assist, call assist, call assist, hand of turn meter, hand of turn meter and call it good. So, uh, got a pretty easy, stress-free win on that fleet, and with that, my opponent was cleared, vanquished, um, you know? And, and here's the thing, he kept so much for offense, like, he even kept Malak for offense, like, he kept 
all the things, uh, like four Galactic Legends, Jedi Luke, Jedi Revan, Je uh, General Skywalker, <clears throat> everyone, um, his Commander Luke team. The only good characters he kept, really, or that he put on defense, were, was his uh, Darth Revan squad, but even even still Malak from it. And I put so much, so many good squads on defense that he eventually just ran out of options and still failed seven times or six times on my Luke team. So, um, I mean, that's, that's how you do it. If someone goes full offense, you just respond with full defense and you can usually trip them up. Uh, but you have to, you can't just go half-hearted into it. You have to actually commit. Like, I put a ton. If you guys look at my squad zones, I, I just packed them full of just BS teams. Just completely ridiculous. So, that being said, guys, trying to make this video shorter. Uh, I love you all. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails. See you next time, guys. Or not. You might not watch it again. I don't I don't have any idea, but goodbye.